going to talk some really interesting facts and interesting information about Canada and studying in Canada. And uh, we're going to choose one of the universities as one of the leading universities in Canada right now. And I really don't think we could have someone better to represent that country, that university, the University of Manitoba right now. We have with us Ms. Lindsay Fenwick. Thank you, Lindsay, for being here with us and taking out the time. Thank you so much for having me. So I guess I guess it's going to be really wonderful. You know, it's really exciting whenever we uh, multicultural connect together and we try to understand each other across the countries, across the seas. And for all the students and all the generation that they want to go abroad and study, you know, it's really exciting for them. So before I won't I won't take a lot of your time. I'll let you take over the uh, you know steering wheel. I'll let you have the presentation first, and then I'm going to, you know, throw some questions at you, which I've received from a lot of people from Facebook, Instagram, and forms. So over to you, Lindsay. Perfect. Thank you. Well, welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, is it possible that I'm able to share my screen? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Wonderful. Uh, can the tech team please enable the screen share, please? <clears throat> Just let me know when that's ready. But yeah, I'm really, really excited to be here. I uh, I haven't obviously been able to visit Pakistan for quite a while now. So it's great to be able to connect with you online and uh, to tell you a little bit about our, our programs at the University of Manitoba uh, through the International College of Manitoba. Perfect, my screen sharing is working now. Should be able to Perfect. see it. Perfect. All right. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, uh, we uh, at, at the International College of Manitoba, it, it really is all about making the smarter move, which I think is so important uh, for any student looking to study abroad in Canada or anywhere in the world. Um, but especially in these times, you want to make sure that you are making a smart decision and that you're going to be able to meet those goals that you have for yourself, that your family has for yourself. And we're here to make sure that you are supported and set up right from day one, right from the beginning. So ICM, the International College of Manitoba and the University of Manitoba are located in Winnipeg, right in the heart of North America. Winnipeg is the capital city of the province of, Man uh, province of Manitoba. And this is where I'm coming to you live right now. Uh, beautiful sunny skies, it's early morning here in Winnipeg. And uh, Manitoba is actually one of the friendliest provinces in Canada and one of the sunniest as well. So. Um, we're right near the center of North America, and I'd love for you to get to know Winnipeg a little bit better. Maybe you have some family or friends here, uh, but if you don't, I'd love for you to get to know it a little bit better before we dive into the school, because I want you to be able to picture yourself living here and, and loving it, of course. So Winnipeg is actually one of the most cost competitive cities in the U.S. and Western Canada. So, I mean, that alone makes, I think, a lot of families and students feel really secure in their decision. It's also a top 10 student destination in North America. A lot of international students look at Winnipeg, just not just because of the educational options that it affords, but there's that affordability, which is a big piece. It's also a really fun, vibrant, lovely city. And it's also got a lot to offer you when it comes to looking at post-secondary, uh, or sorry, I should say post-graduation work opportunities. If you're looking at settling down, getting a work permit, applying for permanent residency after you complete your degree, Manitoba's got a lot to offer. We are a major aerospace hub in Canada. We're very fortunate to have a very diverse industrial base and uh, we never really feel those big recessions and there's always really steady growth in our economy with one of the lowest unemployment rates. So like I was saying we're home to one of the largest aerospace hubs in Canada. We're a major tech hub um, with companies like Amazon and Ubisoft setting up, setting up shop here. Uh, we're also a powerhouse for agricultural industry, including agri-food research and development, and a center for life sciences innovation. In fact, the treatment for Ebola was discovered in the National Microbiology Laboratory right here in Winnipeg. So there's all kinds of really cool life sciences innovations and discoveries happening. And when you come into the University of Winnipeg, Manitoba, university campus here located in Winnipeg, the University of Manitoba is located in the southern part of the city and it's a really lovely welcoming campus and students love studying here. When you join the International College of Manitoba, provided we're able to offer in-person classes, um, you'll be studying right here on this campus as well. The University of Manitoba 
It is the oldest university in Western Canada with over 30,000 students, 100 accredited nationally recognized programs, and it's the largest and only research intensive medical doctoral university here in Manitoba. And the university is really all about setting up setting you up to launch your global career. So there's over 350 different activities on the campus that can help you develop both personally and academically, really suited to exactly what you wanna do and what you're passionate about. Many faculties have co-op programs. If you've done any research into Canadian universities, you're probably very familiar with that term co-op, but it means the opportunity for paid work uh, paid work experience as part of your degree program, where you can get some valuable uh, connections and, uh, and experience as well, of course, in companies in your field of study. It's a great way to uh, make those connections and, and land a job when you graduate, because as you probably know, when you do graduate from the University of Manitoba, you can apply for a post-graduation work permit in Canada, and even later you can consider applying for permanent residency in Manitoba. But you might be thinking, I mean, that all sounds great. We're talking about four years down the line, graduating, earning, earning, uh, earning a job, staying working, or whatever your, your goals might be. But how do I get started? Where, what do I do? This is such a scary time right now. I'm not even sure what my options are. Well, that is exactly what ICM, the International College of Manitoba, is here for. We are your pathway to the University of Manitoba to make sure that students especially our international students who are coming from a completely different education background. They're starting in a completely new country, culture, navigating all of those um, intricacies of, of moving to a different country. But not only that, you're learning a completely new education system um, and you're starting the highest level of studies that you've ever undertaken. Um, higher education here in Canada, the university level, that's a big deal. So the ICM is here to make sure that you are fully prepared for your university studies at the University of Manitoba. And there's a couple different entry points into our program. We have the university transfer programs, stage one and stage two. So let's say you're doing O-levels right now, you would be joining our university transfer program stage one, which is sort of a foundation level program. Uh, it's an eight month program that would allow you to meet the requirements or it sort of acts as a bridge between your prior study. For example, O-levels is the most common, uh, common entry point into UT UTP stage one. But if you finished your A-levels or your, you've graduated high school, HSC, if you finished class 12, then you'd be joining our UTP stage two, the University Transfer Program stage two, which as you can see is equal to first year of a University of Manitoba degree. From UTP stage two, it's a 12 month program and it'll be leading you into second year of the University of Manitoba, where you'll go ahead and finish your bachelor's degree and graduate with your four year bachelor's degree from the University of Manitoba. So it's a great way to get yourself settled into the Canadian higher education system with a program that's here to really support your success. And we do that in a lot of different ways because our, our education, our programming is really customized for international students. We are, uh, we like to think of ourselves as an expert in the area of international student education. And we do that with things like small class sizes. So studying in whether it's a virtual classroom or a real, real life classroom, studying in class sizes of about 30 to 35 students, um, which as compared to a normal first year university class is almost unheard of. Normal first year university classes can have hundreds of students in, a, in an amphitheater, in a theater. Um, so having those small classes really allow you the time to get to know your instructor, your classmates, um, and, uh, and make sure that you're able to really adapt to this new education system. Uh, because students, I mean, they're away from home for the first time. They may not know necessarily how to, uh, for example, plagiarism and academic integrity is a very key, very important concepts in the Canadian education system. And if you are not quite sure how to do proper referencing techniques when you're writing that research paper, um, if you're not keeping track of your references, and you make a mistake, well, that could have big consequences on your, on, your, uh, on your GPA and on your grades. And we wanna make sure that 
students, our students are fully aware of how the how these systems are work, how the systems work and how to do these things properly. So you don't run into any run into any surprises as you go along your university career. We have extended instruction time as well. So you have more time up to about 30% more time with your instructors each week, which is huge, more time to ask questions, more time to delve into that subject matter so you really understand it, as opposed to having to figure it out on your own. Skills workshops, social events, student leadership opportunities, uh, the picture on the screen is of one of our student success advisors. Um, so you have that opportunity to meet with advisors online right now, but eventually again in person. And I think the key thing, although it is the, the last, it is not the least, the key thing being that all of our programs are closely monitored and approved by the University of Manitoba. So you know you're studying the same curriculum uh, in our UTP2 classes that if no, a first year student would be studying at the University of Manitoba. Um, but all of our outcomes, our instructors as well, are all very closely monitored by the U of M. So you know you're getting that same caliber of experience from the oldest university in Western Canada, but it's being delivered in that setting that's here to support your success. And as, a, as an ICM student, you still have access to all of those campus facilities like the uh, sports and rec facilities on campus, the career counseling services, the health center, personal counseling, um, all of those great things that come with studying on a, a major university campus. The, the options that you see on the screen here, just some snapshots of the majors that each of our pathways can lead to once you join the University of Manitoba. I uh, definitely recommend you download our brochure or head to our website to see the full list. But I always like to give students a quick snapshot into what they can expect when it comes to degree programs. So you can see you can earn everything from a, a four year bachelor's degree in food science to economics to mechanical engineering to accounting to computer science, biological sciences. I mean, it's all across the board. So I think I really encourage, in fact, students to take a look at some of these majors, uh, look into them a little bit more because I, I, I find a lot of times students and their families have a very specific career path in mind or a very specific major in mind. And you may not know all of the other options that are out there for you. And the great thing about a University of Manitoba degree and, and many Canadian degrees in fact, is that you have that flexibility. You will be taking courses outside of your main area of study. So you'll be able to do some exploration. You'll be able to check out some different faculties and see what it might, might mean for you to earn a degree in that area later on. It'll also give you the chance to really develop yourself and become that well-rounded individual that employers are looking to hire once you graduate. So you might be asking yourself, how do I apply? Well, that is exactly what the next uh, Premier Consultants is here for. So you can always connect in with them and their team of counselors, and they can help you out with your application process. It's a really quick application. You just go on to uh, go into our website, complete your details, which was what the team would help you with, submit your documents. We are happy to consider students for a conditional letter of offer as well. So if you're maybe still finishing up your high school right now, you're into your final year, maybe you haven't quite finished your IELTS results yet or received your IELTS results yet, you are able to go in and apply and earn a conditional letter of offer and then clear off those conditions, submit those outstanding documents once you get them and you can get your unconditional offer. So you can get started uh, quite far in advance. I would recommend to get, getting started quite far in advance. That'll buy you enough time to apply for your visa later on, get your accommodations sorted if you're planning to travel here, all of that kind of thing. And speaking of travel, um, COVID-19 has uh, obviously, yeah, COVID-19 has obviously caused a lot of, uh, a lot of changes to be made in higher education or education in general in the last uh, 17, 18 months. So we do have COVID-19 updates and FAQs on our website if you want to ever go check them out. Uh, right now, uh, most of our classes are being delivered online in the fall with a small cohort being delivered on campus. And we're planning to, uh, to continue that hybrid model. So in the winter time, um, while we do wait for further guidance from the University of Manitoba and the province of Manitoba, uh, we are expecting to continue offering some courses online this January 
which might come as a relief to you if you uh, are needing a little bit extra time to get yourself sorted out before you travel. Um, but we are also hoping to continue on on campus um, courses as well this January and we'll continue updating students um, through our website as well as through emails if you secure your offer letter um, through emails so that you'll be able to to stay in touch with us and know all of the latest updates when it comes to COVID-19. So speaking of staying in touch, I would love for you to get connected with us. Uh, we have our Instagram and Facebook page, which is a great way to get a peek into what um, student life is like, especially Instagram. Our student experience team posts a lot on stories so you can get a, a sense of what kind of events are happening on the campus or happening with ICM, some on campus, but mainly still virtual. On our website, we also have a lot of great information. You can check out our student guide. Uh, you can also even connect in with some current ICM students and find out what life is like um, right from a student if you go to our website and then click the chat now button. So with that, I'd uh, like to thank you for your attention. And I, I know we have some questions coming up, so uh, I will for sure stick around for that. But uh, glad that I was able to share a little glimpse into what life is like at ICM. And uh, I hope we'll be able to welcome you on the campus someday soon. Thank you so much, Lindsay. That was a very informative, uh, yet small, brief, but very informative uh, presentation. I think you, you covered most of the chunks uh, there already, but I'm still going to ask you some of the questions again, maybe, because there are a lot of people who joined us late. And uh, I was just, uh, you know, I was thinking I was going to throw this question at you, why Winnipeg, but you already answered that question. It's a sunny place. Pakistan country is sunny, so familiarity over there. It's got uh, to the new tech hub. You, you mentioned Amazon. You've mentioned other uh, big companies coming over there. That means whoever is going to study from there, they might have an opportunity to actually work with them or contribute towards their uh, working strategies. You have the new era coming in the Winnipeg, Manitoba University area. The university itself is beautiful. So. You know, I, I see, I, I know you mentioned it in your first slide, but I'm still going to want to ask you this. What is a, exactly is UTP stage one and UTP stage two? And, uh, you know, because a lot of people are really basic, they really don't understand how it is. I know it's about all levels, A levels, but we have other, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, education system as well, metric uh, FSC that's equivalent to all of us A levels. So, what is UTP stage one and UTP stage two? Yeah, UTP, one, UTP stage one acts as a bridge between uh, your uh, your previous secondary studies, usually that is O levels, but it could also be depending on your results in your HSC, it could be your HSC. Um, it is a foundation level program, so it's uh, the courses are more equivalent to year 12. So they are not university level courses, but they're there to prepare you to study university level courses. And so it's a, it's a great benefit, even students who are studying, um, who are planning to study in the university transfer program stage two, UTP stage two, sometimes end up taking one or two courses from our UTP stage one program to help them meet those prerequisites that they were missing um, because perhaps they didn't study math in in uh, class 12 or they didn't do so well in their chemistry um, and normally universities would not consider that they wouldn't give you that option to sort of upgrade your skills while you start your university studies but we can allow that here at ICM and then university transfer program stage two is for is usually for students who've completed um, year 12 equivalent level studies. So like we said, A-levels or year 12 in uh, HSC. And it's the first year of your, of your degree program. So it's equivalent to the University of Manitoba's first year of their bachelor's degree programs. So, and, and, and do, is there any sort of uh, entry requirement for these particular stages, stages one, stage one and stage two? Any particular requirements that we have to make sure that we achieve before we apply for this? Yes, absolutely. So with our university transfer program stage one, you would have to pass three O-level subjects. Um, or if you have earned a 50% in four academic subjects um, in your HSC, that would gain you admission into, and a 50% average into UTP stage two. 
Now, if you finish HSC, um, most students who finish HSC would be looking at finishing or going into UTP stage two. And so we'd be looking at 55% average in four academic subjects in HSC for UTP stage two, or we'd be looking at D grades in two A level subjects or four AS level subjects for admission into UTP stage two. Um, and uh, like I mentioned, you don't have to have earned that when you're applying, you can apply for a conditional offer letter and submit your final results once you receive them. Uh, but you that is what we'll be looking for prior to your enrollment and prior to issuing an unconditional letter of acceptance. And we will also require you to meet our English language um, requirements, which you can students typically do with IELTS. So IELTS of 5.5, no band less than five will gain you admission and meet our English language requirements. But, but I, th I think those are pretty neat uh, requirements and um, I think most of the students would be able to achieve those uh, things as well. I'm just gonna summarize it really quick in our language for the people who are looking at there. So, हम लोग जो हैं ओ लेवल्स के बाद भी इसको अप्लाई कर सकते हैं ए लेवल्स के बाद भी अप्लाई कर सकते हैं लेकिन ये है कि कुछ परसेंटेजेस हैं जो हमें मीट करनी है अगर हम यूटीपी वन को यूटीपी स्टेज टू में अप्लाई करते हैं यूटीपी स्टेज टू जो है वो ए लेवल्स यानी कि एफएससी के बाद का है यूटीपी स्टेज वन जो है वो है ओ लेवल्स यानी कि टेंथ जिसको हम कहते हैं हमारे यहाँ उसके उसके बाद आप उसमें अप्लाई कर सकते हैं इसी तरह उसकी कुछ रिक्वायरमेंट्स हैं उसकी मजीद रिक्वायरमेंट डिटेल्स हैं वो आप हमसे ले सकते हैं 55% की आपको परसेंटेज बताई गई है या ओ लेवल्स के लिए डी डी ग्रेड से ऊपर की इंफॉर्मेशन चाहिए वी नीड मोर देन वी नीड डी ग्रेड एंड अबव so uh, uh, i just yeah. want to add something my name is abdul rahman i am a senior student recruitment manager here in pakistan all the links are provided on your chat box plus o right. levels which o level is equivalent to the grade 11 and after the o levels and if student have a hsc part 2 not meeting the requirement of stage 2 they can go in a stage 1 foundation program as well and all the links are right. there in the chat box so you can go and check that link as well perfect 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 so we've got the links everyone uh, you can obviously go to the links now so alin so i have another question we've got uh, students who have a 12 year education and we have school, uh, students who have a dae which is a 13 year education does icm uh, you know uh, accept people a uh, dae qualifications dae that's 13 years education Our admissions team can take a look and consider it on a case by case basis. Our our program is really designed for students who've completed twelve uh, years of education, because it is a uh, a first year university level program. So um, students who've com completed thirteen years of education, um, as long as that's the type of program that they're looking for, they can certainly have their uh, have their qualifications assessed by our admissions team for free. There is no application fee. So if uh, yeah, you you'd be welcome to submit an application and have it assessed on a case by case basis. Perfect. So, and uh, you know, like uh, you said, apply from start. Uh, you there are conditional offers, and we can just get start on. But if if we have to give it a time range, what is the minimum or maximum time range that you would put in for the whole uh, application process from the day the student presses apply now till the time. he or she gets an acceptance letter well so the biggest thing that students will be working around are visa processing timelines which uh, can be quite lengthy especially during covid-19 there were quite a few delays in visa processing so you do want to allow a maximum time for your visa application so as early as possible that you're you can get started on those next steps Six, seven, eight months in advance would be ideal. Um, the later you leave it, the more likely it is that you won't receive your visa in time to start the program. And while we do have online options and students can study online without a visa, you might feel more secure studying with a visa, and so you would have to defer your intake, which we can do. We do have three intakes every year: January, May, and September. Our next intake is coming up January thirteenth. So if you didn't have your documents, your visa in hand and ready to go in time, you could always request to defer your start date to the May intake. But I know students get find that disappointing, and so do prepare as far in advance. 
then not only is your visa application sorted, but you can also make sure that you've uh, got your top choice of accommodations because those often fill up very quickly and you do have to apply very early for the most popular types of accommodations like on campus living. So really you will do yourself a huge favor and save yourself a lot of stress by starting these steps very far in advance, eight to 12 months in advance. So girl, guys, uh, everyone out there, you heard her fly as soon as possible, as, as soon, soon as, as possible. possible. So you need to get in, you know, don't wait, just don't wait, get in touch with us, just apply as soon as possible, you know. And, uh, you know, if, I want to also ask, there's, there's a person who just uh, dropped in a question, I just want to, uh, just want you to quickly address that. Uh, does Manitoba also offers master programs? The University of Manitoba does have masters and PhD programs, yes. Okay, all right, perfect. So, um, and is there any progression criteria from UTP stage one to UTP stage two and then to the second uh, regular year, degree year? Is there any progression criteria towards it? Uh, so from moving from UTP stage one to UTP stage two, you have to be passing your courses uh, depending on the program. It's usually about 60% is what we would consider a pass. Um, if you're moving into engineering, which is a little more competitive, then you would be expected to earn higher grades in math, chemistry, and physics. And that would be the same. I, I should have mentioned that when we were talking about our entry requirements. To join engineering, we will be looking at higher admission requirements as well. So for example, C grades in A-level math, chemistry, and physics, or 70% uh, average in HSC part two, math, chemistry, physics with no grade less than 70, 75% average, no grades less than 70 in those three subjects. Um, probably just uh, confused everybody, apologies. Go to the website, it's all written there. In, in black oh, that's awesome. We, yeah. To sum it up, if, 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 tell me if I'm wrong, uh, correct me if I'm but, wrong, there are different uh, segments who require different, uh, you know, um, requirements for admission for progression criteria, obviously for engineering or any other high advanced degrees, they require that, a bit yeah. more better grades than uh, the ones which are, uh, which are on the other side, which you mentioned earlier in your presentation, of course. Exactly, so, yeah, engineering will require a little bit higher, but so let's, so when you're talking about going from UTP stage two into the second year of university, uh, once you do get your letter of offer, you'll see both your ICM program and your University of Manitoba program, and you'll see links to the University of Manitoba's website for information about what you need to do to gain admission into second year of your uh, of your degree program. Each program does vary depending on, um, on the faculty that you're planning to go into. But many programs, it's a matter of earning 30 credit hours, which is 10 first year courses uh, with uh, 2.0 out of 4.5 GPA, which is about a C grade um, average. So for many of the programs you need to pass, you can get into your major program in second year. And in fact, 90% of ICM's alumni earned at least that amount in order to get into the University of Manitoba in second year. So it is it is achievable. If you stay on track, meet with our advisors, um, you can do it for sure. There are a couple so programs, sorry, just going to finish because it's important here. Uh, there are a couple programs, business and engineering, which do have caps on the number of students that they'll accept each year. And so you not just have to earn those 30 credit hours with a two or 2.5 GPA, typically you need a much higher GPA to get into it. Business will range from about a three to a 3.4 out of 4.5, depending on the year. Engineering will usually range from about uh, similar to about a, th about a three to sometimes a four or even higher GPA out of 4.5. So uh, yeah, so it depends on the program. And, and so we could, uh, it, we do have very helpful program planning guides on our website, but of course, if you, if you secure a letter of offer, connect in with us and we can help explain this to you specific to your program um, and your uh, desired major, whether you're planning to do co-op, if you wanna earn an honors degree, as you can see, there's a ton of different opportunities. Um, and so we'll direct you to the places, the links and give you some information about um, what you need to know, what you need to keep in mind. And then you have access to our student success advisors. Once you start your program with us, we'll be able to meet with you and um, answer all of your program planning questions and make sure you stay on track. That's wonderful. Yeah, and so, I should mention too, the University of Manitoba faculty staff do often presentations with our students as well. So you can speak directly with the, uh, with the faculty staff too. So you'll get hear it right from them as well. 
You know, that's actually, that's really nice. They can, students who are trying to get connected in ICM or were trying to get admission in ICM, if they connect with the faculty directory, they can create, they can get more confidence, they can get more focused, and they can be more clear as to what they want to do, how or which, you know, um, uh, genre they want to go into. it. So it's really good for them. So in that perspective, now let's say I, I want to get my admission at ICM. I really love ICM, but the problem is I really don't meet the progression criteria. I do not meet the progression criteria, but I really want to get into ICM. Is there any way I can do that? Um, sorry, you mean in, in this case that you don't, you're coming out of high school and don't meet the requirement or you- Yeah, if, you, if, if the student program. does not meet the progression criteria for, uh, for a UTP stage one or UTP stage two. The progression so you mean you've, you've completed let's because it's mainly about UTP stage two so you're saying you've uh, you've studied UTP stage two and you're worried about getting into the University of Manitoba and what can you yeah, do yeah. yeah I mean, so, I mean uh, even if it's one stage one but I if I don't uh, meet the progression criteria so is there any way for me to make sure I can get still get an admission ICM or improve something or something like that um, so when you say, sorry, maybe I'm just misunderstanding your question here. So are you speaking about moving it from ICM into the University of Manitoba, or are you speaking about joining ICM from the beginning? ICM, ICM at the first, first it starts with ICM, obviously, and then. Yeah, the okay. Room. So our published admission requirements are requirements. So we are not able to adjust those published requirements. So you would need to meet them um, in order to gain admission into our program. But like we already saw, they're very flexible requirements to join. Um, to join into UTP stage one or UTP stage two from high school. Now, once you're into our programs and you're looking at going into the University of Manitoba, so let's say you've completed your program at ICM or you're into it um, and you've applied into the University of Manitoba, but uh, for whatever reason, you weren't able to gain admission, there's always a few different options for you. You can always work on improving your GPA uh, in order to reapply in the next intake. You can. Apologies, there's okay, a little noise outside. Um, you can always look at uh, reapplying to the University of Manitoba after approving, improving your GPA. Um, or you can also look at perhaps changing into a different faculty at the University of Manitoba, either to continue your full degree and earn a different degree program, um, or to, uh, to sit there or to act as a temporary uh, faculty where you would improve your GPA in order to reapply. And really okay, that perfect. is um, mainly just for the two competitive programs, which is business and engineering. For the other programs that often is not, uh, often is not, the, is not the issue and students are able to move. So the students do have options, um, provided you have at least a 2.0 GPA in our program. And if you were looking like you weren't achieving that 2.0 GPA um, well in advance, our instructors would be flagging this, our ICM student success advisors would be connecting with you. So there's a lot of support that goes into it before you get your final transcript. After you finished ICM and you realize, oh boy, this didn't go so well. We, are, we, are, we would have been talking to you. We have special programming to help get students back on track called Reboot. There's all kinds of, um, safety nets in place to make sure students are able to meet the requirements that they need. I think we have someone trying to ask a question here. Yeah, so we've got Amir Fasla. He wants to know what are the requirements after second year? After second year. So depend again, depending on your program. So once you're into the University of Manitoba, you'd be working on finishing your second, third and fourth year. Um, in some cases, the faculty will have a minimum GPA that you have to maintain, um, but ultimately then you'd have to make sure that you complete the courses that are required for your degree program, um, as well as, uh, and if, if necessary, there may be a specific GPA that you have to maintain, um, like again, depending on if you plan to do a co-op program or a, an honors degree program. Um, and in some cases as well, courses will have specific grades that you need to earn. So it's, it's a lot to talk about in, in one general webinar, but if you apply or if you have an offer letter, then we can help direct you exactly to your program and the information that you're looking for so you can see it. Yeah, like, or if, uh, guys, like... if you actually wanted to take a look at this right now, Mian, go to the University of Manitoba's academic schedule on their website, and that would show you everything you need to do um, to, to earn your degree program. 
So there you go, Mia Faisal. Uh, I, th I guess that answers your question. And I have another question from the audience and they're saying, uh, are you offering scholarship? Is ICM offering scholarships? Um, so scholarships right now are uh, available to students once you're into our program. So current students starting in your second term. We have over 40 different scholarships available based on academic merit, community involvement, many other things as well. And so you, uh, yeah, you could be considered for them after your second term. We don't have any entrance scholarships right now, but as we talked about already, ICM is a smart decision for the budget conscious student. Uh, you're able to live in a, uh, a very uh, economical city and we have uh, very affordable tuition fees, just over 18,000 Canadian dollars for the UTP stage one program and just over 19,000 Canadian dollars for the UTP stage two program. I think that's pretty reasonable considering these days and um, um, considering other universities as well. I wouldn't mention the names, but I think it's reasonable. So uh, I know I, mean, I know you can't mention all the all the programs that are being offered in uh, the ICM, but could you mention some of the famous ones or some of the ones you think are really um, uh, I mean, really uh, leading out there from ICM programs? Yeah, um, so I mean, we have the, uh, obviously the ones that I, I found are most popular in Pakistan, the business programs, the engineering programs, the computer science programs, the biological science programs. Um, but I think some of the coolest programs we have are in the Faculty of Agricultural and Food Sciences. If you have a business, if you're more of a business minded student or a science minded student, there's a lot of options in there like food science becoming a food engineer, creating your, new, your own food products and everything that goes into that, even marketing those food products. Um, human nutritional sciences, so becoming a registered dietitian is a really cool one, especially for someone who might be looking to get into sort of the uh, health side of things in their future career. A registered dietitian is a, is a great opportunity. Um, agribusiness, agribusiness is a, is a big business in Canada, a major industry. And so earning a business degree with a focus on um, agribusiness is uh, would really set you apart and those those uh, that faculty is a highly employable faculty in Canada for sure. There's also the uh, environment earth and resources program so if you're wanting to get into um, environmental science and studying the impacts of climate change for example if you're interested in um, working in um, oil and gas or mining minerals and exploration there's the geological sciences and geophysics programs there. Um, Recreation Management and Community Development is our newest degree program, and that one is really cool for students who want to get involved in the community, um, maybe plan major events like huge, huge festivals, um, sporting events, that kind of thing, but also community programming, working in community um, centers or working uh, in like, you know, summer camps and doing the programming for that. That program is a really cool one, too. So there's like I was saying before, there's a lot beyond just what you might initially think when you think of a degree program. There's a lot of options out there. And I really recommend students do some exploring and find out what they're passionate about. Wonderful. So um, Lindsay, I'm gonna take you a bit back uh, to our previous uh, conversation. What are the documents requirements for the application? You know, I mean, obviously this is a very important question because since it's a lengthy process, we need to make sure that we save time and not make errors. So what are the document requirements? So the application itself is important. So the filling out your details, um, a copy of your passport, the photo page of your passport, those are sort of the two main documents. Um, your transcripts, depending on where what you've completed to date, your uh, copy of your transcripts will be uh, helpful for us to get an idea of where you are when you're planning to complete your studies, for example, or if you've already completed your studies and proof of that with final results. So whichever transcripts you have available, the most recent ones would be uh, helpful. And that's it. Um, then once you do have your final transcripts, your final IELTS results, submit those into our admissions team so they can update your file accordingly. And uh, the admissions team will guide you if there's any other forms to sign or other information that might be missing. And if you have been out of high school, if you've graduated your high school program for um, uh, more than a year ago, then they'll be looking for some information about what you've been doing that during that time as well. 
And um, I, I, say, uh, I know you mentioned this before, but uh, I see a lot of people joining and uh, more and more uh, in the time. So I still want to ask this. So, I mean, is the UDP stage one same for all programs? I mean, you already did mention this, but I still want to clear it out for all the people who are new on this. Is the UDP stage one same for all the programs? The, the program itself is just UTP stage one. There's not a, um, a specific subject attached to it. Like for example, UTP stage two science or UTP stage two business. UTP stage one is UTP stage one, but there are several different courses within that program that you'll be able to choose. You'll be doing eight courses over the two terms of UTP stage one. So depending on if you're planning to go into a course that requires chemistry, physics, then you'll want to make sure you take chemistry and physics in UTP stage one. Um, math will be a requirement for all of our students. So um, I wouldn't say it's that the courses are the same, but it'll be the same program name on your offer letter. Right. And uh, is it the same thing, uh, another thing from the qualification side, English proficiency test, what, which, one, uh, which ones are the best? You mentioned IELTS, obviously, with the band 5.5 plus, but any other uh, ones out there as well? Yeah, I find most students will do IELTS um, because then that way you have it available for your visa application as well. Um, but we can accept other tests, TOEFL, we can accept um, even O-levels English. So there's quite a few on our website we could look at, but I find IELTS is usually the most popular one. Yeah, okay. And uh, I see someone was asking about the band itself as well. So I guess that also answers yeah. your question as well, uh, Faisal. Uh, okay. So uh, what, what about the tuition fees? You didn't mention about the 18,000, which as I said is reasonable. As, uh, I see people who are new join. I just want you to you know, repeat the tuition fees once more. Yeah, so, UTP stage, so UTP stage one, two term program is just over 18,000 Canadian dollars, 18,247 to be exact. And the UTP stage two program, which is a three term program, those tuition fees are 19,175 Canadian dollars. Um, and that doesn't include costs of living. So for cost of living, I'd recommend budget, budgeting another 12,000 Canadian dollars per year to cover your costs of living. Perfect. So all in, so, you're looking yeah, at about yeah. 30, 32,000 Canadian dollars per year. So then, so obviously it's Canada and it's a beautiful place. I mean, I've been to Canada myself a couple of times, it's beautiful. So obviously students would want to go about, you know, go places, visit sightseeing. So the question then comes, is there part-time working hours per week? Student? How many, is, the, is it allowed? And if it's allowed, so how many part-time hours can a student work on the weekend or what, what's the procedure for it? Yeah, I mean, I'm not an immigration consultant, so I would recommend everyone goes to the website, um, but just to some, I guess, high level information is that, yeah, UTP stage two students may be eligible to have work rights on their study permit. You get your study permit when you come into Canada, so that's up to the border officer to determine for you. If you have work rights on your study permit, that means you can work part time up to 20 hours a week on or off campus, depending on what it says on your study permit. And I'm going to say that about five more times. You have to read what it says on your study permit um, so that you make sure you're following, uh, you know, you're following your conditions of being here in Canada. But don't get too, um, too focused on part time work. Like you alluded to, it is really just to pick up some, you know, extra money to spend with your friends on the weekend. You're not going to be able to cover your costs of living. You're not going to be able to cover your tuition fees. And because this is such a big undertaking, don't plan to work in your first six months. Spend your first six months focusing on your studies, making sure you're able to adapt to your new education system. If you're ace in your courses, you are knocking it out of the park, then maybe if your, work, if your study permit allows it, you could look at picking up a part-time job. But don't underestimate the value of, uh, of uh, uh, volunteer experience. There's a lot of opportunities to get volunteer experience, and that also looks great on your resume. It gives you something to talk about in, a, uh, in an interview with a prospective employer. And of course, you can always keep your mind on those co-op programs in the future. Once you're into uh, year two at the University of Manitoba, you can apply for the co-op program and, uh, and start those as early as um, at the summer after your second year. And you earn competitive wages in those programs, which is very nice. Perfect. And Lindsay, um, you know, I mean, if someone does decide to work after six months or a year, so 
is there any sort of a minimum hourly wage in Winnipeg that uh, they could expect to get? I mean, I'm sure there must be sometimes some minimum. Yeah, wage each there. province has a minimum wage. Let me just uh, quickly Google what Manitoba's is. So That's Manitoba's is uh, $11 and 95 cents as of October 1st. So just about $12 an hour. Um, that's the minimum wage. So that would be the wage you could expect to earn at an entry level job, maybe coming in with very little experience. Um, yeah, that's the minimum wage. Okay, so the exciting part, I'm about to graduate and now I'm looking towards getting a job in Canada and maybe in Winnipeg, maybe anywhere else. So what's the, you know, what's the job, what's the ratio of the job opportunities for students over there once they graduate or near graduating. So how, I mean, it sounds really fancy that the, the tech companies over there really get you excited, pumped up, but what's the reality out there? Yeah, I mean, you got to put yourself in the in the seat of an employer, right? You, there's no there's no one answer to that question because it really depends on you and what you've done to set yourself apart uh, from the other students when you're applying for a job and that employer is looking through all the resumes. What have you done to set yourself apart? And that is like we talked. I mentioned a little bit at the beginning of the presentation. There, those activities, those co-op programs, those job fairs, uh, the career counseling services, that is what the University of Manitoba is there to guide you with throughout your four years so that you're um, not just earning your degree, which is of course an important part of meeting the education requirements for many career paths, but that you're also earning experience that's relative to your planned, uh, planned career path so that employers will look at you, you'll be able to not just have, um, not just have a degree program on your resume, but you have experience that you can share about, you can answer those interview questions. Uh, when you're going into the interview, you, you would have practiced them already had you gone into work workshops with the Career Services Center. In fact, a lot of times employers come onto campus to meet with students. They do job fairs, uh, not during COVID-19, but in, in, uh, in other times. Um, hopefully, again, we'll get back to that eventually. But yeah, so I mean, you really got to think about what, you, what you're doing to set yourself apart because a degree is great, but it's not enough to guarantee you that job. The other thing I really love this analogy, one of our students used, one of our alumni used is uh, it's uh, studying in Winnipeg and, and living in Winnipeg is like being a big fish in a small pond. So you can really make those connections quite easily if you work your, if you work on it. You can meet with employers, you can meet with hiring managers at banquets, at job fairs at um, whatever virtual opportunities that there might be available right now, but through co-op programs, for example, which are still going on. So you can make those connections because connections equal jobs. And so if they know you already um, and you've been able to make yourself stand out and they remember you, um, then you, you will, yeah, you will find yourself, I think, in very happy circumstances once you graduate. For example, with the co-op programs, 90% um, of the co-ops, I think it's 90 of the co-op students in the business program secure a job with one of their employers after they graduate and they have a 97 percent employment rate with co-op as you heard her you need to be unique you need to work hard you need to be smart you need to make sure you attend the workshops and everything if you stand out you'll make it so you know just be sure uh, let me know when you guys go and get settled in amazon or other tech hubs <laughs> I, I, I love that <laughs> i'll put that out on facebook and everywhere so uh, another thing, um, a lot of people want to experience the new culture, uh, the new way of living, the new life in new, a different country. So a lot of students do come for that as well. So how's life in Winnipeg itself and in the University in College of Manitoba? How's the student life? How's, uh, you know, social life? How, how, do you, how do you perceive that? Yeah, uh, right now I, th I think a lot of it is virtual, which uh, which may be disappointing, but there is some opportunity. I shouldn't say disappointing; it's different, right? Um, but we need to make sure that students and our community members are staying safe. Um, so there, but there are a lot of opportunities to meet new friends virtually uh, through different uh, through different events like meetups that our student experience teams run. Um, but if you are here in Winnipeg or, you know, you're coming next year or in the future, uh, yeah, I mean, Winnipeg is a really diverse city. It's a really friendly and welcoming city. We've got an amazing Pakistani community, so you'll be able to meet friend, new friends from possibly your hometown, from all around Pakistan. You'll be able to find food and, um, you know, the uh, religious celebrations, like, for example, Eid attracts 
again, not during COVID-19, but Eid prayers um, can attract thousands and thousands of people. They have to use the biggest facility that is available in Winnipeg to host Eid prayers. So um, yeah, there's there's a lot of really great cultural opportunities if you want to stay connected to your uh, to people from your home community, but you can also get the chance to meet people from all over the world, people who've lived in Canada all their life, people who've recently immigrated to Canada. Uh, I mean, Winnipeg is always getting noticed on the world stage. So just recently, Times, uh, Time, the uh, magazine, the, the major publication Time magazine, uh, named Winnipeg one of the 100 best places in the world in 2021. So that's pretty cool. I think that says a lot for itself. Yeah, definitely it does. And uh, I, 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 I'm sure it's COVID is there, but it's obviously we're going to work around it. And we understand it's there. And I heard that the Kenyan government has also set up a readiness plan. So can you tell us what the readiness plan is and what, how is it helpful for students to make sure they're safe in the pandemic and they could you know, enjoy a healthy uh, learning experience? Uh, so each uh, each designated learning institution like ICM uh, has its own COVID-19 readiness plan. And so that plan really walks you through what you need to do if you're planning to travel, um, planning to arrive, quarantine, creating your quarantine plan, as well as uh, after you arrive and, and sort of living safely here. And we have quite a few different um, modules and guides for students who are um, taking part in in-person classes as well. So safety is the top most priority. Um, it's also great to know in Manitoba, I think across Canada, uh, international students are able to be vaccinated, um, typically within after 30 days of arriving here, uh, you can get vaccinated, your first vaccine dose. So if you're not fully vaccinated yet, you can do that. And we'll have ICM uh, will have several different workshops across the fall so you can find out more about what you need to do if you're planning to travel if you're planning to arrive in Canada, how to create that quarantine plan and navigating all of that so that readiness plan is the main document and then we have a, a great team of staff will be able to help you um, help you look at your quarantine plan and your arrival plans and make sure you're uh, well prepared to do that if you choose to travel. Again, we're, we're looking at having some online classes in January. So if you are not uh, ready to travel yet, it's likely you can study online from Pakistan in January, but in the future, travel um, may end up being required of you to complete your degree program. And so we have those resources available for you. Again, so, uh, planning far in advance is the biggest thing. And <laughs> apply as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah, planning planning your arrival and quarantine far in advance will, will make that a much smoother process for you. And let's say in, in general, uh, apart from the university, since, since you're a citizen of Canada, I mean, what one message would you like to forward to the generation, the young generation of Pakistan who are looking forward to coming to Canada? I mean, I think first of all, I have to I have to have to say good for you for doing this research, coming on webinars, um, asking questions. That is the biggest thing is to make sure you have all the information as far in advance as possible. So ask questions, do your own research on websites um, to find out what to expect and then have an open mind, have an open heart, know that there's people here to support you. So don't be shy to reply to our emails to ask your questions, to take advantage of those workshops, to meet with advisors. We're all here to help you. And so we want to make sure that you, yeah, we want to make sure that you have an excellent experience and that you are able to achieve those dreams that you have for yourself. So take advantage of all those resources that are available to you. Thank you, Litsi. Thank you. That was very kind of you, very informative and very uh, to the point precise. So guys, you heard her ask questions as much as possible. And that's what we are here for. I'm leaving our contact number in the chat as well for you to get in touch with us. And if you have any questions furthermore, just leave it with us. We'll uh, bug Lindsay again, and we'll try to get more details uh, for, for you guys. So um, Lindsay, once again, I'd like to thank you for giving us this time and this um, really good, great session. And I really enjoyed this. And I hope everyone who was listening to you got uh, all the information they wanted to hear about Canada. And I'm sure ICM is going to have a lot of Pakistanis in the next coming years. Thank you so much for this opportunity. You were an excellent host. Thank you so much to the thank next uh, Premier Consultants. Such a, such, a, such a fun time, so thank you.
Likewise, thank you. Okay, guys, so this is it. You've got our number in the chat. If you have anything, so you've got our Facebook, you've got our Instagram. If you want to get in touch with us, if you want to reach out, you have our slide details in the chat. Facebook page, you've got our Facebook, and you've got our other office details as well. So uh, that's pretty much it. Now we're going to end this session, and we're going to let Lindsay go and have a cup of coffee. And I'm going to do the same as well. And uh, take care. Uh, good uh, rest, rest of the day for you, Lindsay, and good evening, Pakistan. Bye, thank you.